Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matt Bingham and I'm going to be going through some steps on setting up a home lab. Um, mine is called binglab.local uh, for a uh, name. And what I'll be doing is going through the steps of setting up a basic DNS server, DHCP, uh, getting into Catello, which is basically a management type system that can sit there and do configurations for your systems automatically. I will be using VirtualBox Headless um, to create this. Um, I have a segment that's already been set up for that off from my network gear. I'll be going over my network gear as well as other types of technology. I'm also into drones, FPV, as well as just regular uh, photography drones. Uh, I enjoy anything that's electronics. And if you would, like the channel, subscribe, come up with different things that you'd like me to cover. I have a lot of different knowledge in a lot of different areas. I'd be more than glad to share what I know and try to put it into something more that's consumable. Um, so Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a VM in VirtualBox uh, Headless. Uh, from there is actually a web interface. So we're going to go to the IP address of our VirtualBox. Um, for this uh, setup here, I have it set to 10.11.1.2. Um, once you get into the uh, actual VirtualBox web interface, from there we'll create a new VM uh, by clicking the New button. Here we'll put in the name of the box that we want, Admin1. Lab.local. Linux is our type, and we're doing Red Hat 64. Whoops. Red Hat 64. Next. Sorry if I go through this real fast, but uh, you can look in the notes. You can also uh, play around with this to get used to it. Uh, so here we're going to say a VDI type. It's going to be dynamically allocated. So the 8 gig, we're going to make it 10 real quick. Create. And we should have the VM over here on the left hand side. As you can see, it is not powered on. What we need to do is change the settings real quick. In here, we want to make sure that the uh, display and remote display are enabled. Therefore, we can do a remote desktop uh, to it and allow multiple connections. Next big thing is storage. Storage is uh, our drive itself, which we set for 10 gig and then the empty we are actually going to set that to a CD-ROM and we're going to use the CentOS 7 minimal ISO uh, network we need to change that from NAT to bridged uh, therefore it will be on the same segment um, that segment is the 10.11.1.x or .0 um, to 256 but you can only use uh, uh, certain, I'm sorry, 255, but you can only use certain IP addresses. So there's only 254 IP addresses available in that segment. Um, from here, we'll click OK. And at this point, we can hit our Start button. When we hit Start, the big thing that we need to look at here is the remote desktop server port. So it's 9,000. So what you'll do is you take that server port and add it to the IP address of your actual virtual box that you have set up. So our virtual box is 10.11.1.2, and then we'll append 9,000 to that. So let's go into Remina, I believe it's called. That is the RDP uh, client on this Linux box that I'm running. I'm running Linux Mint 9.1. We're going to hit the little plus button. If you get an error when you try connecting, it's most likely because of your color depth. Um, we aren't going to use a GFX. We're actually going to use a true color 24-bit. Um, for that and then here's going to be the IP address of the virtual box Which is 10.11.1.2 and then we're going to put our port in which is 9000 And we're going to connect as you can see we now have a uh, Install screen of CentOS so it actually booted up got the ISO and is going to start uh, You know as if it was a physical box uh, from here. We're going to say install CentOS 7 Okay, once it comes up to the GUI for install, we are going to, uh, you know, welcome to CentOS 7. So we're going to hit continue here. And we're in the installation summary. Uh, here we're going to need to change some things, uh, nothing too major. Uh, installation source will automatically be pulled in software selection as minimal install. Uh, for the automatic partitioning, just go into that one and click done. We're going to use the automatic uh, partitioning. Next, the biggest one is we're going to do the networking. For the networking at this time, sometimes the mouse gets a little bit 
uh, crazy here uh, as we have Ethernet set up there so we've got the one port so that's good now we need to configure it and when we configure it I find it best to actually use the keyboard um, so you're gonna hit tab we got Ethernet and we're gonna go to the IP4 settings hit tab we're gonna change it to manual here we're gonna select add I'm gonna put our stack IP address in from the uh, spreadsheet that's on the website so it's 10.11.1.5 our net mask is going to be a 24 which is uh, the same as a 255.255.255.0 it's just a, a shorter uh, slash uh, type network for that um, gateway is going to be 10.11.1.1 and then once we're done with that hit enter 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 and now we go to DNS servers. DNS servers, since we don't have any DNS servers, we're actually going to use Google, which is 8.8.8. .8 and we're not going to worry about search domains yet. And we're going to hit save. Once that's saved, now we can go up to the little button here and say on. And it will pick up the IP address that we just put in there for that box. At this point, we can click done. Everything looks like it's ready to go. We've got the wired, uh, you know, date and time zone all that stuff looks good we're going to say begin installation and at this point we can set the root password make it a password that you can remember and we'll be using this constantly throughout and select done it's going to go through and install a bunch of packages um, I'll be uh, fast forwarding through this because it takes uh, some time and I'm trying to make this video as small as possible it's time for a reboot Now remember, this is through the remote desktop, um, so we're we're seeing all this, you know, kind of if you will, from a remote uh, location. Uh, so here we're going to log in as root password that we set up earlier, and the first thing we're going to do is going to check the IP address, and it says that it's 10.11.1.5. So we can now go and check this. Okay, first we're going to ping the box to make sure we get response. We've got our response, so that's good. Next, we're going to now SSH the box, and that's root at the IP address. And accept the key and the password that we used earlier. And we are in. So our box is set up, and we have an IP address of 5 like we wanted to. And now what we need to do is update this box. Um, to the latest and greatest so we will do a yum update as I mentioned earlier I'll fast forward through this just to make time go uh, a little bit faster so you guys aren't watching a bunch of packages get installed but I uh, should go through smooth and not have any issues okay everything looks like it completed correctly and everything looks good um, so at this time we'll actually uh, create a uh, host name so that is the command host name control and then set host name and then the host name is going to be admin1 bing lab local okay just to check that real quick hostname dash f for the full and then host dash s for the short so everything looks good that way um, we're going to reboot the system now since the new kernel was installed so we're just going to hit reboot here and then we're going to send a constant ping again to you see when it comes back online since this is a virtual box it should be back online pretty fast There. Um, now the next steps are to actually install uh, bind and bind utils. So yum install bind and bind utils. I'm going to say dash yes so it'll do it automatically. Okay. 
Okay, looks like both bind and bind utils got installed properly, so everything looks good at this point. Um, one thing that is interesting is, is they call bind what is DNS, but then the actual service itself is called named. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set that up to uh, start up automatically. It's not, we're not going to start it right now, but we're just going to set it up to set up, start up automatically. Um, so we're going to do system control enable and then named. And it created a symlink, so everything looks good there. And from that point on, now we're going to actually have to go in and create the different zones and go from those steps uh, from that part. So I'm going to clear the screen here real quick. Okay, now we need to create the zones that we just specified in there, um, which is in var named db, I think, is it var named data, and it's going to be db dot Bing lab dot local. And here's a real small file for that. Um, we can see the start of authentication um, for that and uh, time, refresh an hour, week, expire. Um, name server is going to be dns.binglab.local. Got a, a, an A record as well. We have a DNS as well as admin being the same. Uh, we've got the Cotello, uh, which is going to be another one that's going to be manually ip so we put that in there. Uh, the USG3 is actually the default gateway that's on a Unify um, network gear that I have. And then VBox, which we connect to to create the VM, is uh, to 11.1.2. So that is our, if you will, our forward DNS lookup zone. Just remember, this is going to be the reverse lookup. So even here, it gets a little bit, uh, you know, not complicated, but it's reverse of the actual IP address. So if your IP address is ours is 10.11.1.x, um, you're actually going to go opposite direction. So it's going to be 1.11.10. And then inside of here is going to be your reverse DNS lookup. Uh, basically, so I'm going to set up the same way, only here it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to have your actual IP address, which is 5, 1, and 5 for your different boxes. You've got your uh, DNS server as well, uh, a record. You've got your uh, PTR for binglab.local, your uh, name server, and all of that good information in there for that part to work. And that part is now complete. So we've got our four lookup zone, our reverse lookup zone, our PTR uh, zone all set up in there in DNS. Uh, our, so now our ownership has been changed on the uh, those two files that we created. Now we're going to make sure that SE Linux has uh, been changed on that uh, context on those actual files. And then this one's going to be the uh, db.110. So both of those have now been put underneath the uh, SE Linux management. And we're going to restore. Next command is going to allow uh, to the, the zones to be written to by named. Now we're going to actually check the uh, config to make sure that there's no errors in it. And it looks like it came back good. Next we're actually going to check the zones. Uh, zone looks like it's good. And we also want to check the PTR zone as well. And both those come up as good. 
clear the screen real quick. And we're going to check the RNDC status. Okay, let's first check the RNDC status. Everything looks good there. And then next, let's do a dig real quick of the name server. And everything looks good here. 